न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायक A very good evening and welcome to News First's brand new political talk show Face to Face. Today is episode 3 of Face to Face where we talk all things politics, the good and the bad. This evening we are joined by State Minister of Foreign Affairs Mr. Tarak Abal Surya. Thank you very much Minister for joining us this evening on Face to Face. Thank you for having me Jamal. Mr. Abal Surya, I want to approach today's uh, discussion in a rather different way i want to ask you we know that you are a state minister you are a member of parliament and you have chosen politics uh, as your bread and butter but had you not become a politician which avenue would you have chosen well prior to joining pol- politics I, i was in the insurance field uh, and i was in the private sector mm. uh, i was head of corporate business development at uh, sri lanka insurance mm-hmm. uh, then uh, so I, th- i i don't know maybe i would have stuck to the stuck to insurance uh, i presume so let's assume that you did uh, stick to insurance yeah. and you moved forward in the career ladder in the insurance sector yeah. given the things that are happening in the country right now mr balasurya would you be angry would you be depressed at what you're seeing in sri lanka at present with rising cost of living substandard medicine a failing medical sector a healthcare sector education brain drain all of these things coming together converging would you would you be proud to say that you're sri lankan I would always be proud to say I'm Sri Lankan. Mm. I think that that's irrespective of the fact what the country is going through. Mm. Um but would you be proud of how it's being governed at present? Yes, it also depends on you know from what perspective you look at. Mm. Whether you look at use whether you s- want to see the glass as ha- half full mm. or whether you want to see the glass uh, glass as half empty. And then also when you s- when you when you s- say this um uh, I think you know it it's also comparative. Mm. Uh now given that last year we had to go through uh, where, where, where we di- didn't have the bare essentials we had long queues where we had um, no petrol no gas people were dying in the uh, uh, at the no essentials yes um, and uh, given that last year uh, there the people came out into the streets and then for the first time in sri lanka uh, elected president was uh, forced to uh, resign mm. and given that uh, the we were very close to anarchy Uh, if there, there were certain parties who were uh, surrounding who wanted to surround the parliament mm. uh, and uh, if that had succeeded uh, and things could have been a lot worse mm. um, so given where we were last year and uh, and how fast the country has uh, stabilized uh, i'm certainly optimistic uh, but we are not out of the woods and we have a long way to go uh, but uh, i feel i feel cautiously o- optimistic that we are moving in the uh, the right path Uh, and uh, the, uh, the the direction which the new president has taken mm. uh, will pay uh, will will the dividends will pay off uh, uh, in the near future mm. you mentioned the direction that the new president has taken and we saw a precursor of what he aims to achieve last week when he presented the 2024 appropriation bill which is now being debated in parliament and the third uh, the vote on the third reading will be held later in december mm. and many expected this budget to be a pre-election budget because there have been undertones of an election being held next year and most of the people the general public wanted some sort of relief from this budget mr balasurya especially in terms of how the cost of living rose so rapidly in terms of taxes and the prices of essential goods and what not mm. do you think this budget addresses all those problems or at least to a certain extent addresses those problems certainly not addresses all the problems i think um, you know it it somewhat addresses the problems mm. uh, and we can't have in a traditional way the pre-election budget test i think the uh, as you mentioned mm. uh, uh, this is uh, uh, i think a continuation of the last year's budget this also is uh, uh, i think in somewhat uh, budget which uh, which has addresses the uh, the reforms which we need to do both not only in in the, uh, the in the economic side of things but also on the political side uh, and then also uh, i believe that this um, um, uh, the uh, 
all this budget also has to look at the uh, as you mentioned the from from people side from uh, people uh, if prices increase uh, and if the uh, uh, the government can't give any relief mm. uh, the people will get uh, price out of their existence so you need to give some concessions to the people yes. uh, and uh, I believe this budget uh, addresses that in that regard there's a 10,000 rupee increase uh, uh, in um, the cost of living allowance uh, cost of uh, living allowances mm. but also some relief uh, for the small and medium mm. uh, scale um, there's a 50 uh, billion uh, uh, allocation. Uh, allocation for um, uh, such as uh, for the uh, loan loan uh, loan reductions um, the subsidies uh, okay. uh, which I think would be uh, very helpful for the small and medium uh, industries mm. so I think we are possible uh, the president and the government has given reliefs mm. as much as possible uh, but it's not a it's, it's not a traditional election budget uh, uh, where uh, we traditionally it has been all parties have been gifting things to uh, the people during uh, b just before elections mm. and and I think I think we have to admit that you know those the uh, f the follies which we made in the past are the reasons why we ended up uh, where we are mm. uh, but certain things which we have done we have to continue with uh, let's take for as for example um, the reforms. The president spoke of the uh, the, the CEB reforms. Yes. The president spoke of uh, the reforms in the uh, uh, the SOEs. Uh, the, SOEs. Uh, the president spoke of um, the, the reforms in the education sector. Right. Uh, the land reforms. Mm. I, I think those are also absolutely important from uh, uh, in order for, to put this country right mm. uh, and from a uh, uh, yeah, let's say uh, three to five year. Uh, uh, perspective right. uh, so I certainly think that you know this is a, a mix of both uh, some form of relief to the uh, the people mm. uh, but also uh, looking at the future to uh, to see that uh, we have a sustainable economy mm -hmm. so despite uh, the political upheaval we saw last year mr. Balo Surya the SLPP remains the majority party who yeah. holds a majority in Parliament but there have been certain individuals from the SLPP itself coming forward and saying that they do not agree with these budget proposals and more relief should have been given to the people. Now, when it comes to the 13th of December, when the final vote on the appropriation bill is held, do you think the budget will be passed, especially since there are many factions divided at present? expressing their opinions on the budget and even within the SLPP which is the ruling majority in Parliament when they have certain dissidents, dissenters do you think this budget will be passed? It was passed. Uh, the second yes, reading was passed. Yes. Yeah, so mm. I see no reason why the, the third reading will not be passed. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, also when you say the SLPP, mm. uh, you need to understand that uh, although other uh, there are a lot of other party members which contested from the SLPP. Mm. For example, the SL, uh, SLFP members yes. also contested from uh, SLPP. Mm. Uh, the leftist parties, uh, we might be the ones. Uh, Vasudeva, Udenana, uh, mm, Kamampila. Kamampila and uh, all of them also mm. contested from uh, the uh, SLPP. Right. So, uh, and then also there was a section of certain MPs uh, who uh, towards the end of the Japan government felt that uh, there's no hope in continuing with SLFP mm. and then they joined uh, the uh, SLPP and uh, then they uh, felt that, you know, they are down the pecking order and mm. then they got disrupted for whatever uh, the reasons perhaps mm. not being offered portfolio mm. portfolios mm. so uh, you know different people have uh, sits on the fence depending on their uh, for, for different reasons mm. um, but uh, the government as it is is strong uh, we got 122 votes uh, yesterday mm. uh, and I'm very confident that uh, the third reading re reading will also pass right no because the question that I asked you uh, mainly stemmed from um, Member of Parliament Namal Raj Paksa, where he was very critical about the president's actions, and he said that the president should have uh, a clear understanding of coalition politics. So that gave a certain assumption that the SLPP might not be fully invested in the president's plan for the future of this country, which is what led me to ask you that particular question. Okay. Oh. So do you believe that, although that on the surface there seems to be unity? But when it comes to the deeper 
end of the matter there seems to be a certain dissatisfaction within the SAPP that they like you said might not be getting certain portfolios or they might not be getting the prominence that they have uh, required or that they need or they have bargained for but, I, mean, I mean I don't like to talk on behalf of others mm. but the let's uh, talk on a party but, 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 basis yeah, from, yeah, from, so from, from a party basis as I said mm. you know, the SL, uh, SLPP mm. has different fractions yes and these fractions ha has come out uh, come out uh, now mm. uh, the SLF, SLFP fraction is uh, operating separ separately mm. uh, the Dallas group is uh, is operating separately and they're perhaps in uh, uh, more in touch with the SJB mm. uh, the uh, then also I think the Nimal group is also uh, uh, operating uh, separately mm. uh, so there are different uh, fractions within the uh, SLF uh, SLPP SLPP as well yeah and then also I think uh, uh, some of the I would think the seniors in the party mm. uh, might be unhappy that they might not have been given uh, portfolios mm. uh, so there are different reasons and there can be different levels of happiness uh, quote unquote uh, happiness mm. uh, but what's required is the 113 votes mm. uh, to pass the budget and we are confident that uh, the government has uh, the 113 votes uh, to pass the budget moving forward talking about the SAPP since we are on that subject last week the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka delivered a landmark verdict in terms of uh, the country's economic collapse that occurred last year and Basil Rajapaksa former president Mahindra Rajapaksa and Gotabe Rajapaksa were also uh, accused of taking the country towards or steering the country towards collapse and that this was this was a very major decision a verdict that was delivered by the Supreme Court uh, Mr. Balasurya. Basil Rajapaksa is the uh, chief organizer or the main organizer of your party and Mahindra Rajapaksa is the leader of the party and former president Gotabe Rajapaksa rose to power through the ticket of the SLPP. Given all of these developments do you believe that the SLPP's appeal to the larger masses come election season will be stunted um, I, 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 I I cannot answer that question whether the, uh, uh, no, whether the Supreme Court uh, uh, judgment will have a bearing on the the uh, the way the people will vote for the mm. SL SLPP mm. or not, uh, because I don't think in the first instance that uh, SLPP will contest uh, as the SLPP. Is I would think so? uh, I would think that you know that we would uh, form a, a, a greater uh, coalition, a grand coalition, and uh, for the we certainly would need to have a grand coalition for the presidential election mm. and the same coalition will continue uh, to f for uh, uh, for the general election so that's what I am pre uh, uh, presuming. So will that coalition include the United National Party the president's party as well? Yes it certainly has to include the, uh, the uh, United National Party. Mm. Uh, the, we are working with the president. Mm. Uh, the president has been instrumental in uh, in the recovery of the economy mm. and I think we also deserve some credit mm. to, you know for supporting the president and uh, uh, and for the, uh, the economic re uh, recovery. Mm. So when it comes to for elections then why do we need to separate uh, if it has worked for the country mm. uh, why it's a winning formula if it's a winning formula then uh, why not continue with it mm. so uh, I think uh, the people have uh, confidence in the president uh, because when the challenge was bestowed on others mm. uh, at that time uh, nobody came forward and um, uh, took up the challenge uh, the president uh, being just one member being just one member one knowing that parliament yeah, knowing that the SLPP uh, can kind of pull the carpet under uh, his legs yeah. anytime they want to, he nonetheless took the challenge. Yes. Yeah, so and yeah, and uh, to his credit, uh, uh, and nobody wanted to take the uh, the finance ministry at that time. Right. It was offered to uh, members even in the opposition, but mm. nobody came forward, and the president had to take the finance ministry himself. Right. Okay. And uh, I think. It's relatively compared to last year mm. and now the people see the changes mm. and there's uh, I think belief coming back uh, that if we have to do what we have to do mm. um, that good times will return right so we are in conversation with uh, State Minister of Foreign Affairs Tarak Balasurya this is face to face we are crossing over for a short commercial break stay with us we will be right back news first face to face with Jamal Ratnayaka 
inflation, exchange rates and the rise and fall of the stock market. Bringing you insights into the business world. Watch the business buzz every Tuesday at 9.30pm on TV1. News first, face to face with Jamal Ratnayaka. Welcome back to Face to Face to Face. We are currently in discussion with State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tarka Balasuria. Mr. Balasuria, before we headed into the break, we were talking about the SLPP and the expectations of the people, how the SLPP intends to contest upcoming elections and whatnot. You are the State Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs and Sri Lanka has been subject or the center of attention to many regional superpowers as of late. We saw many key figures arriving in the country for discussions, for bilateral discussions. Nirmala Sita Raman, even uh, the Chinese President's Special Envoy who is uh, currently in Sri Lanka, so many others in recent months. Yeah. Is there a certain reason behind all of these high-profile visits in such a short amount of time, Mr. Balasurya? Oh, well, it's the location. I think mm. you know, Sri Lanka, uh, its location is quite valuable. Mm. Uh, that doesn't mean that you know, certain other countries' locations are not valuable. Yes. Uh, and uh, certainly, you know, uh, Sri Lanka is also uh, wants to increase its bilateral ties with uh, our partners. Mm. Uh, and uh, we deal in separate spheres. And then, uh, so we need to deal with pretty much all of the countries mm. let's say as far as far as, far as our, uh, the investments are concerned the, the Indians and the uh, the Chinese uh, our Asian countries are very important to us mm. uh, as far as our exports are uh, concerned uh, the United States mm. and uh, um, the European uh, market is, yes. uh, is very important to us yes. as far as the dollars are uh, concerned uh, the the Middle Eastern countries and countries like Korea are, are absolutely uh, important to uh, us, uh, then as long as uh, then as far as our the political uh, allies are uh, uh, um, concerned, I think you know countries like China and uh, again Russia, who has backed us uh, in uh, um, Human Rights Council and yes. Geneva, mm. are very important to us. Uh, so in different spheres, different countries are, are very important to us, and also the emerging countries are mm. very uh, important to us. The uh, our one part of our foreign policy, the economic uh, uh, part of for the foreign policy has also been to uh, look Africa, uh, the policy which we have right. uh, been uh, adopting. Mm. Uh, then also other Im other emerging powers such as uh, Indonesia, mm. the Bangladesh, all those countries are, are, are absolutely important to us. Mm. So we need to deal with the, all the countries. And I think the fact that you know so many dignitaries from all these countries uh, come to Sri Lanka, yeah. it's a good sign. Mm. Uh, it, it shows there's interest in Sri Lanka. Mm. Uh, and we need to be uh, wise enough and smart enough to not to antagonize anyone, uh, but, but to um, the balance of our interest and mm. uh, deal with everybody. Yes. Uh, because we have no major uh, Major political ambitions. It's not like you know we want to have a huge military to go and invade a country. Mm. So what we need to really develop is our, the economic uh, ties with uh, the other countries. Speaking of antagonizing uh, regional neighbors and uh, other superpowers, we saw how there was much controversy surrounding the Xi and Six research vessel. Yeah. India raised concerns over it, and it was uh, docked in the Hambantota report uh, shortly after. But there were somewhat of a disruption or there was a bit of friction between the two nations when it came to this particular controversy and I'm just using this as an example there were several yeah. other key concerns that were raised so how does Sri Lanka play a, a part in making sure that we protect our interests while we also serve towards other countries and help them grow their bilateral relations with us? Uh, no, they, uh, certainly there will be bumps in any relationship. Mm. Any relationship between two countries yes. um, uh, are very much like a relationship between two people. Yes. So there will also, now for example, let's say in the, in the, uh, the Argentina, the, the Falklands War. Oh, yeah. We voted with the uh, United Kingdom yes. and let's say in uh, international flora, mm. uh, Argentina still votes vote against Sri Lanka, mm. okay. uh, simply because we, we uh, voted against, uh, against them. Mm. So, um, so, uh, so I, I think these bumps we shouldn't, you know, 
uh, look at it as uh, we need to manage them. <laughs> uh, and but we shouldn't look at it as this is the beginning or the end of a uh, relationship. Mm. Our relationships with especially with the Asian countries are, uh, Asian countries are very historical. Mm. We have a civilizational link with India. That you know, nobody can ta uh, take it away. You know, we, our uh, pe people from in Sri Lanka are, are mainly from India. Yes. Um, then uh, we have a historical relationship with uh, China. Uh, so, and also given India's position, now India just, I think, uh, recorded a four trillion economy yes. and uh, I think they will soon surpass uh, the the uh, Japanese economy and the, G the German economy which well. are around 4.1, 4.3 mm. uh, trillion yes. uh, to become the third biggest uh, economy, economy in the, in the world. world yeah. So, um, uh, we, uh, so India has its, we need to understand I India's uh, ambitions mm. uh, and aspirations and uh, uh, we also need to understand that India's security concerns. So, uh, I think think um, we need we, we can also take uh, you know certain lessons from what happened in uh, Europe uh, between Russia and uh, Ukraine mm. so uh, we need to ensure that uh, that uh, the, the security uh, the India is satisfied with the security uh, concerns mm. and uh, and uh, that they wouldn't that they wouldn't they, they'll be quite sure that Sri Lanka would uh, either this government or any government that uh, comes into power will not uh, 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 allow Sri Lanka to be used as a platform mm. uh, for uh, any intervention in India. Yes, because I asked you this question as uh, an entrance to my follow-up question. During Sri Lanka's economic crisis, China and India were very instrumental in yeah. Sri Lanka recovering from their crisis. And even now, yeah. when it comes to the debt restructuring process, these two countries are very vital for us to achieve sustainable development and also to resol resolve our debt crisis but there have been uh, certain voices and certain rumors swirling that due to the fact that these two countries have assisted us to a very large extent we might be faced with certain external pressures when we make certain decisions regarding our country and also our sovereignty do you believe that to be true or do you wish to rebut that in what sense uh, in the sense that there might be certain agreements that these two countries reach with Sri Lanka where we might have to compromise on our sovereignty. No, I mean, th you know, th this whole this compromising on the sovereignty thing is, you know, it's blown out of proportion. Mm. Okay, we need to, inter my uh, perspective is that we need to integrate with India for uh, our economic growth. Okay, right. And we, we need to do that. Uh, for our sake, I think. Okay, now we, India's. If you look at the fastest growing um, uh, the states, mm. well, Gujarat is one of them, but yes. most of them are from the south, Tamil Nadu, mm. uh, um, Karnataka, mm. uh, Andhra Pradesh, and yes. the, all that. I'll just give you one example. You know, we have we are uh, when uh, Nirmala Sitaram uh, was there. You know, I accompanied her mm. all three days, and then I was able to talk to her extensively. Uh, now let's say if we have have bridge connectivity. Now we have air connectivity. Uh, she herself left uh, in a in a uh, commercial plane right. uh, to uh, Tamil Nadu from mm. Jaffna, okay. and the ferry service has started. Commenced, yes. uh, then we will be having the roll on roll of ferry, which can uh, bring uh, vehicles also. I see. We I made an uh, I appealed to her to see if we can get get the ferry to Trincomalee. Then we can get uh, young Indian tourists. Yes. But just think for a second uh, that you know we have this uh, bridge uh, from uh, India to Sri Lanka mm. so there's road connectivity mm. now um, I think over oh, 100 million I think somewhere close to 150 million uh, Indian tourists visit Tamil Nadu domestic tourists right more than 90 million uh, domestic tourists uh, visit Andhra Pradesh mm. and uh, and about I think 100 million uh, visit um, Karnataka I mean, can't we get 10 million Indi Indian tourists, uh, uh, Indian tourists uh, uh, year? Or per I think year. can't we get 1 million Indian tourists uh, uh, month? Per month. Now, what we are looking at is now mm. we have got. I think this year, this month, we'll probably end up with about 150,000 uh, 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 Sri Lankan tourists. And so we need to, you know, get out of that, you know, island mentality. Mm. Uh, we think because we are an uh, uh, island, if others come to uh, Sri Lanka, that they won't go. 
uh, they will you know Sri Lanka is the, the the only girl in the beach and that you know we have best of everything mm. uh, no that's not the case uh, if you look at you know how countries in the Europe have integrated how mm. the, uh, the ASEAN countries are integrating uh, so many people uh, just because they have opened their boundaries it doesn't mean all the Germans are going to France or French are going to England or right. uh, that kind of thing is not happening mm. yeah so um, so I think that you know the, the uh, now look at the uh, look at the uh, the tank farm right project. all tank farm yeah. Trinkovali yeah so now we had those uh, it was commissioned in uh, in 1924 so mm. 99 years ago okay and then I think the construction was done in 1930 finished in 1931 yes. and then we have not u utilized it after independence mm. now it's rusting yes the fact that you know we uh, it's a joint project between CPC and uh, the Indian LIOC, uh, uh, LIOC uh, and the fact that we are developing it, mm. uh, it doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere. Yeah, I mean this. I, I keep repeating this because even in France, a similar when uh, the uh, the, uh, the Qataris came and started buying all these the the, the French uh, the uh, historical sites and yeah. then um, yes. they converted them to hotels. Mm. There was a lot of opposition saying why are the Arabs buying our uh, these buildings? Properties, yeah, yeah uh, but just because you convert it into a hotel. It doesn't mean uh, the uh, the uh, that the Qataris are going to take that hotel to Qatar. Right. Yeah. So all these the um, the, the foreigners, uh, the Britishers, when mm. they were in, uh, when we were col colonized, mm. they came and started uh, John Kills and all these companies. Right. But the the Britishers are not. The other companies have uh, continued. Mm. So I think we need to somewhat you know get off that uh, the the island mentality that we will always be invaded we will always over. be invaded right. and uh, we need to integrate for our sake not right. for india's sake mm. you know you know if with or without sri lanka india will, uh, function. India will function india will grow right and they are growing mm. okay so we need to be we have missed enough chances uh, we have uh, that where we had the opportunity to get it right mm. so uh, this is uh, this I would think is a big chance because right. we just need to write on India's back, <laughs> and then we, you know, we can uh, have we can have economic growth. Okay, I, I, I mean, the bridge I think will be a game changer, mm. um, and of course, other areas such as you know the logistics and the port development and right. all that. But it's not only India. Mm. Okay, so we are also looking at now. The president was talking about the uh, China Myanmar uh, the economic corridor. Yes. Okay, so there are different other economic corridors from mm. the China Myanmar economic corridor, and then also from Russia to uh, to uh, Iran, and then from Iran to. Um, uh, I think India uh, and okay. so you can connect with all these uh, other economic corridors okay. so it's going to be interconnected interconnected so what we are seeing is that you know most of these the economic corridors used mm. to go from uh, south to uh, uh, no used to go from, from uh, the south to the west uh, uh, from uh, east to uh, east to west right but yes. now now it's going from, from you know north to south north to yeah. south right so there are more and more economic corridors mm. coming from north to south uh, so certainly I, I think you know so given Sri Lanka Sri has to seize that opportunity we need to seize that opportunity mm. and uh, so it's certainly uh, not only with the, uh, India mm. okay, but India uh, I think it will be easy if we integrate more with India okay but also other countries China is a very important country mm. uh, but uh, now look at the uh, the investment which uh, uh, from the, uh, the United States which mm. came to from the development fund uh, which came to uh, the, um, the Adani um, uh, Adani John kills uh, mm. the uh, the joint project. Joint project. Mm. Now, even when we describe the the uh, the West Terminal, we say it's uh, Adani project. Okay, Adani is on fifty one percent. Okay, but nobody is talking about the uh, I think the uh, thirty five percent uh, which is owned by John kills and the fifteen percent uh, or, or somewhere around there, forty nine percent owned by the Sri Lankan companies. Mm. Yeah, so uh, uh, the the port being developed uh, from I think is, uh, seven uh, seven million uh, the uh, twenty foot uh, terminal yes. to maybe let's say fourteen or fifteen. Mm. Uh, 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 isn't that good for Sri Lanka? Yeah, right. so uh, so uh, I think certainly uh, we need to look at this uh, more rationally and uh, and from a, uh, I think historically Sri Lankans always have a somewhat of a uh, um, close mentality, close mentality, and also uh, I think a minority complex uh, okay. because we have been historically invaded mm. um, by. Um, 
the, the, the chulas Various, and the, yes, the, yes. so many of these uh, mm. the, the great nations things, yeah. and uh, ethnicities. Yes. It, 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 but one needs to keep in mind, yes. okay, when the uh, the when the cholas were a major empire, mm. they not only invaded Sri Lanka, they went and in invaded Indonesia also. Right. Get out of the island mentality that you have is the short message that State Minister of Foreign Affairs Tarka Balasurya is giving you this evening. This was another episode of Face to Face, our brand new political show talking all things politics and we were joined by State Minister of Foreign Affairs Tarka Balasurya. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us this Thank evening and engaging in a very very uh, insightful conversation with me. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for joining. Take care and good night.